Welcome back everyone. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to solve these two limits here and notice both of these limits here are limits at infinity as x approaches infinity as x approaches infinity. And to solve these here, I'm actually going to be bringing back the squeeze theorem, which we've covered in previous videos. So these two examples are going to be a combination of limits at infinity and the squeeze theorem. So if you didn't watch the previous videos, on the squeeze theorem, highly recommend you do before watching this one because a lot of the concepts I cover there, I'm going to be using in this video. So let's start with uh, limit number one. We got the limit as x approaches infinity of cos x all over x. Now, when you look at this just from a higher level, we know cos x is always going to be fluctuating in between what? Positive one and negative one as x approaches infinity, right? So this value in the numerator, it's never going to be above one, it's never going to be below one. It's always going to be between plus and minus one. But then notice that this denominator here as x goes to infinity, that denominator is going to keep getting larger and larger. And so just from a higher level, you can tell that this limit is going to go to zero. Just because, again, the numerator is never going to be out, um, out of the range between negative 1 and positive 1. So not too high of numbers, right? They're pretty small numbers. But the denominator is going to be a very large number as x gets larger. And so a small number over a very large number is going to go towards 0. Question is, how do we show that in a nice way? Well, we can use squeeze theorem. And if you remember in squeeze theorem, what we want to do is we want to take this function here and we want to bound it by two functions. And then if we could show that the limit of those two functions at the specific a value we're looking at is equal to something, then we know that that middle function that we're working with is going to equal that same value as well. The limit as x approaches a of that middle function is going to equal that same y value. So, as I mentioned, cos x is between negative 1 and positive 1 all the time. And notice that here in this function, we can rewrite this instead of cos x over x. Another way to write this is 1 over x times cos x. Cos x over x and then 1 over x times cos x is the exact same thing. So if we know that this is going to be between plus 1 and negative 1 all the time, then we know this entire function, if we bring in that 1 over x here, so we multiply this by 1 over x, meaning that we have to multiply these bounds here by 1 over x as well. So we'll have negative 1 over x and positive 1 over x here, right? Just multiplied 1 over x by 1, got 1 over x, and then multiplied 1 over x by negative 1, got negative 1 over x. So we know that this function that we're working with is always going to be in between negative 1 over x and 1 over x. It could equal them, but it's never going to be greater than 1 over x, and it's never going to be less than negative 1 over x. And so notice that these two functions, we can graph them. So let's actually start with uh, 1 over x. I'll graph it over here. How does 1 over x look like? It looks like that. It's just the parent reciprocal function. And then how does negative 1 over x look like? Well, it's that same function, except it's been reflected in the x-axis. So this goes here like that, and then this comes up there, like that, right? Both of these parts have just been reflected. So this is 1 over x, this is negative 1 over x. And now notice, as x approaches infinity, which is what we're looking at for this function here, as x goes to infinity, what's negative 1 over x going to go to? Notice it's going towards 0, a y value of 0. And as x goes to infinity of 1 over x, Notice that we're going towards that y value of 0 as well. And so by the squeeze theorem, since 
the limit. Actually, let's uh, let's make a full sentence here. Um, since this inequality holds, so since one over x times cos x is greater than or equal to negative one over x, but less than or equal to one over x, and since the limit as x approaches infinity of negative 1 over x equals the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x, and both of those are equal to 0, so that's the m value. So as x goes to infinity, these two functions are going towards 0. Then by the squeeze theorem, that means that the limit as x goes to infinity of this function here, 1 over x times cos x, or let's write it in that original format, cos x over x is equal to 0. And over here you may want to write then by the squeeze theorem, this limit is equal to 0. I just put then there. But uh, yeah, that's what you want to do. So if you remember the squeeze theorem, you want to take the function you're working with and you want to bound it by two other functions that are more simple to work with. And we know that, again, these two functions, as x goes to infinity, they're both approaching that y value of 0. And because this function is always going to be in between those, that means that this function cos x over x, as x approaches infinity, is also going to be 0. And then moving on to number 2, we got the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 to the negative x times sine x. So again, for this limit, we're going to be applying the squeeze theorem. Now one thing I want to mention is notice it's 2 to the negative x, not 2 to the power of positive x. So this could have also been written in, uh, in this format, where we have sine x over 2 to the power of positive x, if we bring that down to the uh, denominator. So either of these are the same thing. And again, if we look at it from a higher level, we know sine x is always going to be in between plus 1 and negative 1. It's never going to get out of that range. So the number in the numerator is never going to be a large number. It's always going to be between positive 1 and negative 1. But notice 2 to the power of x. How does 2 to the power of x look like? Well, it's an exponential function that looks like this. Right, this is 2 to the power of x. And so as x approaches positive infinity, what are the y values of 2 to the x going to approach? They're approaching positive infinity as well. And so what you're going to have is a small number over a very large number. 2 to the power of infinity is going to be a very large number in the denominator. So a small number over a very large number, we can be pretty confident that this limit is going to approach 0 just by looking at it from a higher level and just kind of sort of making sense of it. However, how can we show that in a nicer way? And more specifically, how can we apply the squeeze theorem? Well, sine x, um, we know it's between negative 1 and positive 1, always. Greater than or equal to negative 1, less than or equal to positive 1. And so I'm actually going to erase this. I'm going to, I'm going to keep that format 2 to the negative x instead of bringing it down to the uh, denominator. Let's actually write this up here, give myself some room. So sine x has to be in between negative 1 and positive 1. And so what that means is if we multiply this 2 to the negative x into the middle term here, it also means we have to multiply that 2 to the negative x by the 1 and negative 1. So 2 to the power of negative x times 1 gives us 2 to the negative x. And then negative 1 times 2 to the negative x is like negative 2 to the negative x. There's like a negative 1 in front, but remember you got to do bed mass first, right? So you would do this first and then multiply whatever you get there by that uh, negative 1 in front. So 2 to the negative x sine x is always going to be greater than or equal to negative times 2 to the negative x, but it's always going to be less than or equal to 2 times negative, or 2 to the power of uh, negative x. Again, because that's sine x, it's always going to be between plus and minus 1. Well, 
let's uh, let's graph these here. So let's graph the function y equals negative 2 to the negative x. And also let's graph this function y equals 2 to the negative x. Now, again, y equals 2 to the x, I already graphed that earlier. It looks like this. So how is y equal 2 to the negative x going to look like? Well, notice that that k value there is negative. And so what we're just going to do is we're going to take this 2 to the x graph and we're going to flip it but on the y-axis. We're not flipping it on the x-axis. We would flip it on the x-axis if it was negative 2 to the x, right? But it's 2 to, so that would be an a value of negative 1. But it's a k value of negative 1. So we don't flip it in the x-axis. We flip it in the y-axis. So if we flip this over, it looks like this. Right? That's how 2 to the power of negative x looks like. And then how is negative 2 to the negative x going to look like? Well, notice we have 2 to the negative x here. So if we put a negative in front, what that's going to do is just flip it now over the x-axis because now we're adding an a value of negative 1. So there's a k value of negative 1 and an a value of negative 1. And so when we take this and flip it on the x-axis, it's going to look something like that. So this here is the graph negative times 2 to the negative x. And then this graph here is 2 to the negative x. And notice that as x approaches infinity for both of these, what's the y value approaching? It's approaching 0, and it's approaching 0. And so by the squeeze theorem, it means that this function here as x goes to infinity has to equal zero as well. And so if we write it nicely, we have to state this inequality. So since we got negative two to the power of negative x, since uh, two to the negative x sine x is greater than or equal to this function, but it's less than or equal to two to the negative x, uh, and the limit as x approaches infinity of negative 2 to the negative x, this function here, is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 to the negative x, this function here, and they both go towards 0. Then by the squeeze theorem, the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 to the negative x of sine x also equals zero. Right, so if you show your work like this, write this sentence out, then you should get uh, full marks for it. And yeah, just wanted to go over these examples and show you how you can have limits at infinity where you can also apply the squeeze theorem. When we did examples before, we were applying the squeeze theorem as x approached zero, if you remember. But you could also apply it for limits at infinity.